Today we're gonna talk about a seller's worst nightmare. Oh my God! We have three points. You're gonna to wanna to stick around for the third one, but the first one is what happens when a buyer backs out last minute because of cold feet, and that is terrible. So this just happened to me about two weeks ago. Yep. We were selling a house not too far from here in Redmond, and the day before closing, the buyer decides they don't want the house anymore. The sellers are panicked. It is a terrible situation to be in, but there is a way to save it. So what we did is, of course, when they back out at the last minute, their earnest money is gone. Yep. Right? So we keep their earnest money in it. And of course, like if you don't know what earnest money is, check out the other videos on our channel. Yep. <laughs> but you get the earnest money. So my sellers got $20,000 of earnest money. We went back on the market, came back, got an offer at full price. So, so, so they ended up making $20,000 over their list price and it ended up being great. Boom. But it, but it is a big fear. So I'll tell you another story is I had clients that were contingent on another home, meaning they have to sell their home in order to buy the next one. The day of closing, the buyers backed out so they could not close on their new home. So what did we do? What did you do? Dun, dun, dun. We saved the deal, damn it. That's what we did. Okay. Dude, tell them how. Okay, so we had an offer, we accepted it, but there were a bunch of showings and there was one other buyer that was very interested in the house. As soon as I found out the buyers backed out, I called that agent and they were still looking. They wrote an offer that same day and instead of going back on the market, we immediately went back to pending and then we saved the deal. The deal is not closed until the money's in the bank. Boom! And number two, Unexpected costs. Yes. These can be huge and painful. It's terrible. So let's tell some stories. Go for it, man. I had a listing in Snohomish. The poor client had not checked her crawl space in 60 years. We had the crawl space. 60 in years? 60 years. Is that even possible? It was a 1901 house and she's lived in there for 63 years. Okay. Crazy. Long story short, we had the inspection done. The, the crawl space was checked out, and there was a family of Norwegian rats. Wait, you don't wait know, hold on a second. Is that, that's not even a thing. Norwegian it, rats are not a thing. It's a thing. And if you don't know what a Norwegian rat is, Google it. But they are bigger than the normal. <laughs> we'll put a picture of them <laughs> if, it, if it's a thing. It's a thing. Long story short, there was a huge delay. It caused the whole sale to slow down, and it was a $12,000 fix. So... Again, these are painful things because the seller, if you're selling your home, you don't know these things are gonna show up. Nope. So my first listing that I ever had. So when you're selling a home and it's on a septic tank, you have to inspect the septic, and, yeah. right? Even if you think it's working and your, your toilet's flush and your garbage disposal's working, you still have to inspect that in, uh, septic tank. This house, okay, this was everything they had in the house and they were gonna sell the house and use that money to retire on, yep. right? And I think at the time it was probably $400,000, one of my very first listings. We do the septic inspection and what we find is part of the septic line has disintegrated, meaning crap everywhere, right? So again, it's unexpected, but there is a solution. So the bad part of about that is because it was close to a sewer line, the city made us connect to the sewer line, which cost $25,000. Wow! Right? So you're gonna get the deal done, but the painful part, of course, is like, they didn't know it was coming. And so when you're talking to your clients, let them know, especially if you're doing some type of an inspection, unknown things might pop up. And when you're a seller, we always recommend getting the septic, if you have a septic, or a home inspection done before you sell the home, so there's no hidden skeletons in the closet. <laughs> or disintegrated septic line. Let's go to three! Number three. Oh God, this is the biggest fear I think of every seller, including when we've sold our own houses. This is the biggest fear for a real estate agent as well. What if your home doesn't sell? I think even though we are so confident in what we do, and your agent might be too, every seller feels like it's not gonna sell. Yep. What if somebody doesn't like my house? What if something's wrong with the house? What if it's overpriced? The three things you need to think about to make sure that that doesn't happen is price, location, and condition. If one of those three things are out of whack, it's not gonna look pretty. It's not gonna be great. So meaning, let's, let's talk about price first, Yep. right? So you can alleviate the fact that 
or you can you can play defense against the fact that your home might not sell if you price it correctly. Yes. So meaning, let's say your home is worth seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, but you think because you raised your kids there, right? You had your pets there. Your 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 family used to come over for every holiday. You're going to get eight fifty for it. No, don't do it. So if you price it incorrectly and it sits on the market too long, it becomes to look stale. Yeah, that's terrible. It's terrible. So price, location, location is the one thing you can do less about. Yeah. But if the location's off a little bit, you're on a busy street, you don't feed into the right school, you can price it appropriately. Yep. Think about Amy. Yeah. Like, t- tell them about Amy. So we just had an agent reach out and asked for a recommendation on a home in Bellevue that, a price recommendation. And great location, it's at Newport, but the school doesn't feed into the Newport School District, which is the number one school district in Bellevue. It feeds into Renton, which is not even close to so, the Bellevue School District. So that's important to know. So again, if, it, if this home was literally blocks over, the house would have been one, worth $1.8 million. But yep. because it fed into a different school, she did a great job and priced it appropriately. It priced it at one6 because it was a less favorable school district. Yep. So we got price, we got location. Condition. This is also a huge one. So if you, it, even if you've got a great location and you think you're priced right, but if the house needs a ton of work, people want turnkey. They do. They, people will pay a premium for that. And I would recommend that no matter how many years you're in a home always work on it a little bit a little bit a little bit so i mean that's a great that's a great recommendation so if you're living in your house don't let all the maintenance get deferred like don't let your gutters clog up like make sure you're cleaning cleaning up the house make sure that you're looking in your crawl space or having somebody look in your crawl space or your attic because you don't want to find like his story with a condition of like the crawl space with re- norwegian norwegian rats. rats are you they were scandinavian no norwegian they came okay from so you want to you want to make sure that the condition is great. Again, there are times where like there is so much deferred maintenance that you'd probably just put your house on the market. But if you price it well, yep. it will fix a lot of those problems. Like, now you know the three horror stories of sellers. And if you're thinking about buying or selling in the Seattle or Kirkland area, we would love to be your agents of choice. Later. All right. I'll just all right, I'll, are you all say I'll. Well, oh. you'll never be a duck dad, but you will be a dad. I am a dad. You I are. Will be a dad. You are a dad. Ted the duck. I'm a dad too. You, to Luke.